Hey everybody. So I just wanted to do quick power readings on Windmill 21 version two, or version three, I think, because I'm just about to change out the blades, the propeller for something a little different. This one has uh, about an 80 degree pitch and I wanted to change it to something. Well, I wanted to try 45 just to see because it was taking too long to accelerate. So this is just a quick power test before I change it. You know, it is it is getting up to, to spin pretty quickly in these winds. It's actually not that windy. It seems windy because it's cold, but it's actually not, th not that windy today compared to what I usually get around here. Today is about 10 miles an hour, um, but it is direct head on, which is kind of a, a rare excitement. It seems like wind usually blows from the south, but today uh, it's blowing from the north, which is good for me. So I've got the multimeter. I'm gonna plug in the rectifier boards and we're not gonna get current, I don't think, today because I don't have a, a load to put on it, um, but future video. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear the, the blade just banged on the, uh, the rod. It's flexing quite a bit, and, and that's how you can tell that the angular acceleration is not what it needs to be because, and I've, I've talked about this at, at great length in my other videos, but if you have too aggressive of a pitch, what happens is when a gust of wind comes, it slaps it, and if it can't accelerate fast enough, it's going to act like a wall. You know, it's going to get it's going to get pushed and stressed to the joints, um, and so that's what's happening right now. Not ideal. Hence why I'm changing the blades, what you just saw, or not the blades, but the propeller. So I don't know if you can see the multimeter, but ever since I changed the gear, well, I changed the whole design of the windmill so that it could accommodate a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Look at this, we're getting five and a half volts out of it already. That's pretty killer. Also, I've mentioned that I do have linear regulators on the rectification board but I am currently probing before the linear regulator and I have that, uh, that, that circuit disconnected from the board right now. There's a switch that you can take it off with. So this right now is the unregulated, just, you know, capacitized output from the rectifiers. Boy, look at that. Six volts already. See that happening? Come on, stay still. Here we go, here we go. Eight, nine volts, 10 volts, 11 volts, 12 volts. Holy cow. Wow, that was amazing. That's really, really cool to see. I've been so focused on the design of the windmill itself that it's, it's kind of rare that I ever come out, that I ever actually get to probe it. So despite being absolutely freezing out here, that's, that's really cool to see. I mean, the question originally used to be, will I be able to charge my phone with this? And now it's not even a question. But I mean, in the context of powering like IoT devices too, a lot of this stuff is, is really low current draw. I mean, this would be phenomenal for something like, you could totally have a little self-powering weather station. No problem. I mean, you can see how slow it accelerates. It's got a pretty good weight to it, so once it does get up to speed, it does spin for quite a long time, um, and it can really keep going through, you know, if, if there's gusts of wind, intermittent gusts, it can keep itself going pretty well. But in terms of starting from a standstill, it's just, it's pretty bad. I've been hearing it slap itself against the pole quite a few times. I think eventually what I wanna do is, you know, I, I live in an apartment here, but I think what I'll do is, is I really wanna get a standalone windmill. Or, or build one, so I might be doing that, you know, this is probably months in the future, but maybe at my parents' house, my parents live nearby. So that would be really cool. You can tell, I mean, the wind is blowing a little bit, but it wasn't moving at all just now. I had to spin it by hand. Here comes a little gust and you can see it's just still, okay, there it goes. We'll give it that one. There's a little bit of acceleration, but I mean, you can, you can tell really easily that it's just not where it needs to be. It's really exciting to see. I mean, this has been a project that's been a long, long time in the making. So to see it, honestly, to actually see it producing power of any kind, instead of just, you know, this is a design that conceptually, that, that theoretically could produce power, to actually see it produce power is a pretty uh, phenomenally, phenomenally exciting feeling to feel. You know, I know it's, I know it's kind of, kind of lame, but I can't help but feel a little bit sentimental just every time I see it making real progress.
At some point in the near future, I think what I want to do is I think I want to put a NeoPixel or a, an LED, RGB LED strip out here, just so that you can see uh, at a glance how much power it's producing. I guess those, you have to write a power signal to it. You could figure it out. I'm sure an Arduino can read its own voltage somehow. It's got onboard re voltage regulators, so it shouldn't have a problem reading, well, yeah, I guess you could hook the voltage up to an analog pin. I wonder if that would register. I'll have to look into it. Hopefully we can get one more good gust of uh, 12 volts to send you off. How about that timing? Here we go, eight and a half, nine. There we go, how about it? We'll have to we'll have to settle for nine because something's falling apart and I just cut myself so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to change some things up. So thank you for watching Christopher's Factory and I hope you have a wonderful day.